Hello everyone, I am Duo from How to Compute, and in this video we have a PC build part list for approximately $550, or maybe even less if you cut down on some of these parts. Remember, these are not absolutely what you must get, but these are merely guidelines of what we recommend. Uh, we may not be entirely right, and these things can easily be cut down if you spent more time in doing so. These are all made out of entirely new parts for those who do not trust used, and again, these may be switched around to suit your needs. This part list was compiled by our newest member of How to Compute. His name is Logan. If you want to give him a warm welcome, he is always around on the Discord. So if you aren't part of the Discord, we highly recommend that you go on there and say hi to us. We're always on there. We always like to interact with the viewers, and it... It's great over there. There isn't that many people at the moment, so this is why I'm sort of selling out on the Discord right now. So, let's get on with the part list. For the CPU, we have a Pentium from Intel's latest lineup of CPUs. This is the G4560. These Pentiums aren't dual cores though, they are actually hyperthreaded like an i3. Which, side note, I don't completely understand because they basically killed their whole i3 family of CPUs. But anyway, it is clocked at 3.5GHz and it costs around $75. It also uses around 54 watts of power so it's fairly power efficient and it is also hyperthreaded like I said earlier. The cooler that you should use is the Intel Stock Cooler. You really won't need much to cool this Pentium, so the included cooler will work. If you don't like the noise, however, you can get a cheap Deepcool Gamax 200T for around $15 or so. We have two motherboards picked out. One of them is to save money, and one of them is to guarantee compatibility. The cheaper option is the ASRock B150M DVS R2.0 for around $56. And the motherboard to ensure the maximum compatibility but is more expensive is the ASRock B250M HDV for around $72. Of course, if you don't want to bother with the possibility of having to update the BIOS, you should go with the B250M. If you want to spend as little money as possible, go with the B150M. The RAM we have picked out is the cheapest 16GB kit of DDR4 that we could find, which just so happens to be the Patriot Viper Elite set for $82. US This RAM is clocked at 2133MHz and has two 8GB sticks, and even features those useless heat spreaders. The storage is just a simple PNY CS1311 240GB SSD. It is a decently fast drive for not a lot of money, costing only $60. It is the cheapest 240GB SSD on PC Part Picker at the time of writing the script, so that is why we added it. It also looks fairly good too in terms of aesthetics, if that matters to you of course. The GPU we picked out is considered to be the best bang for your buck at 1080p. That card is the cheapest RX 470 we could find, which just so happened to be the power color 4GB Red Dragon model coming in at $155. This card is basically a watered down RX 480, but it still performs like an absolute champ. According to Notebook Check, the RX 470 gets around 37.4 FPS maxed out in Watch Dogs 2, whilst the 480 gets roughly 40.6. We'll link the pages where you can compare the results yourself in the description down below. Of course, we cheaped out on the case, but we got the best we could for under $40. We got the Fractal Design Core 1000 USB 3.0, for around $38.99. This case is very simple, only having two 3.5 inch bays and two 5.25 inch bays. It's a micro ATX chassis and is fairly small. It does only come with a single 120mm fan, so if you want to, you can buy an extra 92mm for the rear exhaust. It's still a very cheap case, so don't expect very much out of it. We suggest either an Arctic F9 with fluid dynamic, or so they say bearing, or the Noctua NFA9 PWM if you want to add a second fan. Links to both of those will be in the description. Now we're finally to the last component, and it is certainly not one to cheap out on, otherwise you may end up with a fairly dangerous one. 
This is the power supply. The PSU we chose is the EVGA W1 500 watt, which will cost you about $36 after an MIR. It is an okay power supply, but again, it's a budget orientated one. It is 80 plus certified, so at least it is somewhat efficient. If you want to, you can spend around $8 more and get the EVGA B1 500 watts for about $43. However, as a pre-warning before taking these specifications as an absolute must-buy, I would wait for AMD's upcoming Ryzen chips to release as they transpire to promise very tight competition for Intel, potentially lowering their prices. Even if you are not a fan of AMD, I would still hold off for a little longer to see if Ryzen will drop Intel's prices. And on a final note, congratulations to Kasels for winning the Setup Wars last video with approximately 54% of the final votes. So I hopefully you did find this video helpful, and if you did, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe for more. But anyway guys, this is How to Compute, and we will catch you all next time. Thanks so much for watching.